Hey everyone, this is Brian with uh, another video for you. Uh, today we're going to talk about pressure washers, but in particular it's going to be the chemical injector. The chemical injector is what you're going to use in order to get whatever cleaning solution you have to the surface that you're trying to clean. Some They're very simple, but a lot of people find issues with uh, the chemical injector and proper use and how to eliminate problems. <clears throat> so, uh, the chemical injector itself mounts is two ways. It, it either mounts directly to the unloader, it's fixed, uh, such as you see this one here, or it can be a removable style like you see here. So this one you can put on the unloader and remove because it has a quick connect on it. Whereas this one is fixed permanently to the actual unloader. Now, the unloader itself, as I mentioned, it, it, it helps bring the chemical into to the mix so that you can clean the house. Now, <clears throat> your water goes in here, runs through the pump, comes out through here. So the chemical that you use, regardless of what it is, it doesn't actually enter the pump. So there's no damage uh, to be had from whatever chemical you're using because that, that could be an issue if the chemical come in from, from the, uh, the low pressure in. So the principle of the chemical injector, your water's coming in, water's coming out, you have a hose as you see right here, you have this hose here, will attach to the nipple here or here, depending on which type of setup you have. The physics involved, when you're, when you're running a standard tip, say you've got this zero degree tip, you've got a small orifice, and this small orifice helps increase the pressure that's coming out of the machine, and at the same time, it reduces the amount of water. So there's two things on a pressure washer you want to keep in mind. One is pressure, the other one is volume. And the volume is going to be noted on most machines. You may either see it on the name plate, such as on, on this one here, it says 2.4, or it may be on the, the manufacturing label for, for retail viewing, so here is 2.4. So that's actually uh, a, a low GPM. <clears throat> Your bigger commercial machines are going to hit three gallons a minute, three and a half or four gallons a minute, in some cases higher than that. But for most people, 2.4 up to about four gallons a minute is where they're typically going to find their pressure washer is going to fall. Now, what does that mean? That means, one, the machine's going to need 2.4 gallons a minute to operate properly. If you get less than that, then you can, you can have cavitation, which gets into a whole other thing. But in order to get the 2.5 gallons a minute, your, your machine's got to have that so that it can produce on your regular tips the right pressures that you're trying to achieve. And the zero degree tip's going to give you the highest amount of pressure. So there's a restriction because it's a very small hole. You're still trying to push 2.4 gallon, gallons a minute at 3,000 PSI, but you're trying to do it through a small hole. So this keeps your pressure up, but your water volume is down. <clears throat> now, the chemical injector, you see the difference in the hole. So you've got a zero degree, and I'm even going to pull this white tip out here and this is a larger opening it's got a slot that you see cut in it and that's that's to give it a fan instead of a straight shot so you see the size of the hole it's very large on the chemical tip and very small on your regular tips <clears throat> by doing this your water volume increases so you have more water coming through this hole than you do on the other ones your water pressure drops so to get your chemical injector to work properly you need low pressure and higher volume of water. So this allows more water at a lower pressure. And what that does inside of your injector, and I've got one here, I'm gonna take it apart and hopefully we don't lose the bits and pieces that are in it. Um, but when you unscrew this thing, and I don't recommend you do this because there's two items in here that will fall out more than likely and they'll be gone. When they're gone, that's it. So you take it apart and there's a spring right here and sometimes they're cone shaped like this one is and sometimes they're just cylindrical so you have a spring that's in the base okay and then in this end and it might be a little hard to see that little shiny spot in there that's a ball that ball sits on top of the spring 
All right, and it's stuck in there right now, so I'm lucky so I don't lose it. So the ball sits on top of that spring. Now, when the water pressure decreases, uh, when the water pressure is, is full, it pushes up on that ball and blocks the hole on the injector. When the water pressure drops in the, the high pressure end, because you got the larger tip, the ball itself will get siphoned down. And when it gets siphoned down, it begins to pull chemical from here. So you'll see your, your chemical will be coming up through your hose into the unit. Now, when you set it all up, if you don't see that water flowing, then that means you've got an issue. We'll get to that in a minute. <clears throat> so if you have to take this apart, you just want to be careful because your, your spring is very easy to lose. See, it's very, very thin. And the ball itself, and again, this ball is stuck. So we would have to actually unstick that uh, to get this one to work properly. So when the pressure drops, that ball will get siphoned down against that spring. And when it does, it opens this port. Same thing here. There's a ball and a spring. When that pressure drops, sorry about the pause. Uh, as I mentioned before my other video, this is a, a working shop, so sometimes I have to stop and answer phone calls, questions, uh, do quick repairs or whatever the case may be. So with all of that said so far, <clears throat> we're, we're down to the pressure is lowered because you have a larger tip and when the pressure gets lower, the outside pressure can, is increased and it pushes down on the ball and allows it to siphon as it comes through. Okay, and that's where your mixing chamber is, is right here. You have two types of unloaders typically. You got a fixed and you have an adjustable. Okay, so this one, when it's in place, you can adjust this knob right here. And it may be brass or it may be pla plastic, black plastic. You turn it one direction or the other to increase the amount of chemical or decrease the amount of chemical. And you have to actually look on the package to determine which way is which because they, they vary depending on the manufacturer. So uh, typically when you're screwing it in, it's pushing that ball down and uh, uh, seating it so that you can't get chemical. When you turn it the other way, it'll, it'll allow more and more chemical into the mix. So you can actually get a stronger mix or a weaker mix without actually having to mix it in your, your bucket. So you can put straight chemical in your bucket <clears throat> drop your pickup tube into it, and you're going to get a higher ratio of chemical to water mix. Changing it the other way, you get a lower chemical uh, to water mix. <clears throat> now, the uh, number one issue people will find with, with the uh, injectors is when they're trying to use these, they will find that they're not getting chemical. And th there's only one of two reasons for the most part that you're not going to get chemical. And it, it comes down to what we discussed earlier is flow. So either you have an injector where the ball may be stuck, which you would have to unstick the ball to, to get it to flow proper, or if that's not the case, which that's a little harder, to, I don't even recommend getting into this until you absolutely know for sure that you're having an issue that is injector related. Typically, the problem is the water coming to the machine is not enough. The water pressure coming to the machine is irrelevant. Water volume is what you need. If this machine here in particular is putting out 2.4 gallons a minute and you're only getting two gallons a minute, the machine is not gonna work properly. Now you may still get pressure and it may still seem fine, but you're gonna notice when you try to use the chemical injector, you're not getting chemical into the injector itself. So you've got nothing. So it comes back to the amount of water coming to the machine. And that can vary based on your supply. If you're on a well or city, if you're in an apartment complex, are there other people home who are using water that reduces your water volume? If you're at home, washing machine, dishwasher, a shower, anything like that changes the amount of water volume coming to your machine. So what you want to do, the first thing you'll do when you're not getting chemical from your machine is you're going to take the water hose off and in this case, it says two and a half gallons a minute. So take a five gallon bucket and turn the water on and break out a timer and start filling that five gallon bucket. 
So, and set your, your stopwatch. In one minute, that bucket should be half full or more. If you're half full or more, then you're getting enough water to the machine. That means you've got an issue here. All right? So if you're not getting enough water in that bucket, if it's a two and a half gallon machine and you're not getting two and a half gallons of water in a minute, there's your problem. If it's a three gallon a minute machine or a four gallon a minute and so on and so forth, you've got to get that minimum to get the machine to work properly. Okay? So let's say your water is working fine. So then you want to check for an obstruction in your filter here. Make sure there's no trash. The second thing you're going to do is disconnect your pressure hose. Take this off. You're going to turn the water on. You're going to have your chemical injector set up, and you're going to turn the machine on. Your chemical injector should be pulling chemical with no hose on it. All right? If you're getting chemical, move on to the next thing. Hook your pressure hose up, but no wand. Do the same thing. Start it up. If you've got chemical, then your hose is good. If you put the gun on with no tip and you pull the trigger, uh, you're getting chemical, then your hose, uh, excuse me, your, your gun is good as well. Wherever the chemical stops coming is where you're having the issue. So let's say you have chemical with just the pump, but you put the pressure hose on or you put the wand on with the hose and at one of those two points, you stop getting chemical. That means your hose or your gun needs to be replaced. What happens inside of the guns and hoses, which is not the old 80s band, um, the inside of the hose and the gun begin to corrode, and this opening, this like clogged arteries, begins to reduce inside. That reduces the amount of water coming through the machine, which means your chemical injector is not going to work. Your hoses are calibrated or manufactured to each machine. So if you have a three and a half gallon, four and a half gallon a minute pump, and you go get a hose from Lowe's or some other box store, that hose, more than likely the inside diameter of the hose is smaller, which means, yeah, it'll work with the machine because of your pressure, but your pressure doesn't work off of volume so much. Your injector does. So all of a sudden now your injector's not giving you chemical. That's because your hose, the inside diameter is too small, or the gun, the inside diameter is too small. Either it's just naturally too small, or the corrosion in your existing gun and hose is preventing it from moving enough water. <clears throat> so replace them. The last thing we're going to talk about here is the, the injector itself. If you look, this one's a little hard to see because it's kind of corroded, so we're not, we're not going to look at that one. But on this one, and I, I'm hoping you'll see it, it, it's a little difficult to see, but on the part right here, it says 2.1 with an arrow. Now, the arrow is pointing in this direction. The 2.0 is the orifice size in here. Most of the injectors are going to work because this is a 2.1, which means it needs 2.1 gallons a minute to operate um, or more. So that's not that big of, uh, of an issue because most injectors are going to be what you need. But that arrow is important. That arrow, it points the water flow. So if you buy this, <clears throat> some, some machines come with the female, some come with the male. So let's say this one has the male on it, and we put the injector on this way with the male. This injector is not going to work because the arrow is pointing in this direction. So we'd have to switch these fittings in, in order for it to work. So if your injector is pointing in this direction, the, the arrow, then you're good. If it's not pointing in that direction, if it's pointing at the machine, then that's, that's the incorrect way to, to have the injector put on. Uh, some injectors are fixed, so you have one end that's fixed. The other end can be removed. So if that's the case, you can't switch the injector without some modification of the plumbing uh, in between. But that's the basics of, of how an injector works. Uh, if you have any problems with it, uh, th those are going to be the things you're going to look at. Water volume. After the water volume is good, then you're going to go through with just the pump with the chemical running. Then you're going to go with the hose. Then you're going to go with the hose and the gun. And at whatever point the chemical stops coming, that's where your problem is and replace that item. If it stops in this instance here, if it stops coming as soon as you turn it on, <clears throat> pull your injector apart. Get a nice clean area. Pull it apart. Check your spring. Make sure it's not broken because they will break. Check the ball. Make sure it's not rusted and pitted. 
Make sure the ball is free because this one is stuck. So that one's definitely not going to work properly. And in the case of an adjustable unloader, make sure you have it turned on and not off because whichever way you turn this is going to determine whether you're getting chemical or not. I appreciate your time. If you have any questions, feel free to drop them in the uh, comments below, and I'll try to get back with you. Thank you. Be safe.